Okay, so what are the obstacles of uh, progress uh, uh, in AI? So we all know the AI system need to uh, learn and understand how the world works, and currently they really don't do that. They only understand what we feed them uh, through supervised learning. Uh, eventually, they'll have to acquire some sort of common sense. It's actually a recurring problem that has been identified in AI from the early days, where that, how do we get machines to learn common sense? Um, and I'll, I'll come back to what I mean by common sense. Um, so they need to learn a very, very large amount of background knowledge. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been uh, argued in the past that this background knowledge could be entered by hand by, you know, basically typing rules. Um, but it's been pretty clear it's not going to happen this way. So how do humans and animals acquire common, uh, common uh, sense? And basically by observing the world and living in it and knowing the constraints of the physical world. So machines need to perceive the state of the world so as to make accurate prediction, because that's required for planning. Uh, they need to update and remember their estimates of the state of the world um, and pay attention to important events. Remember what just happened. And they need to reason and plan. So there's a number of work on the perception, which I just showed, uh, which, of course, applies to audio as well. Uh, and there is also a number of really interesting work on uh, the sort of memory uh, updating state of the world, et cetera, which I'm not going to talk about. There's uh, a lot of really interesting research at, at, at Facebook, at DeepMind, and various other places on what's called memory augmented networks. So these are neural nets that are augmented by some sort of associative memory, which is differentiable, so you can backpropagate gradient to them. I'm not going to talk about that, but it's an important area of research. Um, and then the machines need to reason uh, and plan, basically predict what the sequence of actions will, what the effect of a sequence of action will be. So intelligence and common sense basically is a combination of, of four things. One is perception. The second one is a predictive model of the world, like predicting what the world is going to do as a result of your actions, or just because the world is the world. Memory, reasoning, and planning. So let me focus on the predictive model. First, um, uh, let me say a little bit, a few words about what I mean by common sense. So there is a, a, a classical set of uh, sort of natural language processing problems in AI called uh, Winograd schema. And the Winograd schema is a sentence like the one here, the trophy d doesn't fit in the suitcase because it's too large or the trophy doesn't fit in the suitcase because it's too small. So the it refers to the trophy in the first uh, form and to the suitcase in the second form. And the way you, you can resolve this ambiguity about what the pronoun refers to basically relies on your knowledge of how the world works. And so with a shallow understanding of just you know, syntactic word processing, there's no way you can solve this kind of problem. Um, if I say... Um, uh, Tom picked up his bag and left the room. You can sort of imagine the sequence of event that has to happen. So Tom is probably going to stand up, extend his arm, close his uh, hand, walk. He's probably not going to fly or dematerialize like this guy here. Um, and, uh, you know, walk towards the, the door if there is a door and not go th right through the wall. So you know all those constraints because you, you know how the world works. So you can infer a huge amount of information just from those few words because you know all the constraints of the physical world. So how do we get machines to learn that? That's common sense. So I'm going to argue that you know, there, are, there are three types of learning, common learning, that people have been using in, um, in the context of uh, machine learning. So the first one is reinforcement learning. It's uh, you know, basically every time the, the machine tries something, you tell it whether it did right or wrong. And if there are many, many actions that the machine can produce, uh, you have to wait for the machine to produce the right action to tell it to get it right. And it's extremely inefficient if you do it this way. Kind of the pure form of reinforcement learning is extremely inefficient in terms of number of samples. It works well for games like, like Go or chess because, or, or other games because, um, uh, because the environment is completely observable and you can simulate the environment extremely quickly. So you can generate lots and lots of examples by having the machine play against itself. But it's very inefficient in the real world. Uh, supervised learning we already talked about, and you know, that requires manually labeled data. Each label has only a few bits of information in it. And then there is unsupervised learning, which is ill-defined, and that's where the machine gets to see a lot of information. It's asked to predict a lot of information. So a good example of unsupervised learning is predicting the future. Um, I give you a sequence of words, and I ask you to predict what the next word is going to be in, this, in, the, uh, in the text. That's unsupervised learning. It's unlabeled text. Um, or I show you a few frames of a video, and I ask the machine to predict what the next frames in the video are going to be, what is going to happen next uh, in the world. 
So that's kind of a predictive form of unsupervised running, if you want. And the joke I've been making is that you know, because of the amount of information that is given to the machine in each of those modes, uh, if intelligence were a cake, the bulk of the cake uh, would be unsupervised running, the icing on the cake would be supervised running, and the cherry on the cake would be reinforcement running. So this is not to this reinforcement running. It's a very important component of all this. Uh, you, know, you want your cake to have a cherry on top. But, um, but most of the information that we learn as humans or animals is in the form of unsupervised running.